Hey, hey welcome, welcome back. back. I'm Adam. I'm Brett. And we are the Wall Twins. Twins. And today we cook again. No, we don't. We do right. not cook today, Brett. I do not mean to catch you off today, though. It's fine. We have loved cooking. At some point today, we will be cooking. Of course, that's going to happen. However, for this video, we wanted to talk about some of the tips and tricks and things that we've really learned on our griddling journey that have really made this an awesome experience for us. So along with the tips and tricks, we also want to show off some of the accessories that have made griddle cooking and our cooking experience even better let's say up to the next level if you will <laughs> next level griddling for sure we have been so overwhelmed with the amount of support and love we've gotten for the channel and with so many questions coming in we thought this would be a perfect opportunity to address that so if you want to see our take on all the various things that have helped us grow and the tips and tricks and stick around while we dig, dig in I can't believe the wall twins they're right there that's I one know. of them that's the I'm other the one, one. I'm the other one. Like we said, welcome back. However, if you are new to our channel, welcome. welcome. And consider subscribing and hit the notification bell so you don't miss anything. We love to griddle together, yes, laugh together, and just in general, hang out together. While today we will not be griddle cooking, we will be sharing some of the tips and tricks that have really made our griddling experience that much better. The first things first, Brett, the and griddles themselves. Yes, the griddles themselves. Our griddle of choice thus far has been the, the Blackstone. Black I have a 22 inch that I have out on my porch of my condo. It's absolutely perfect for the size that I have for the cooks that I do. And Adam's got the 36 inch air fryer combo that has really helped the success of this channel. When I found the air fryer combo and really fell in love with Blackstone, Brett had seen them also and was blown away. So much so that we started to look for what he could use uh, in a smaller patio setting, what would work for him also for tailgating and doing things that he loves to go and do. So knowing that Brett had now the 22, we also needed to make sure he had a great place for it. So we went to Amazon and found this awesome GCI slim fold camping table that works perfectly for his patio. By the way, not only this product, but many of the products and things that we we talk about today we'll link down below now this isn't a sales pitch this isn't try to go and get you to go and buy up all these items we really talk about the products that we really really love and stand behind these are some of the best products that we have found along the way so if we have a link to it we'll share it the griddles themselves have been incredible so yes. starting with the with the right surface always helps we've been super happy however if you don't have a blackstone if you have any other griddle griddle on I'm sure you're loving it because this has been such an incredible experience for us as marks on the grill says when what he loves about the griddle and we found also it does just about everything a grill can do and about a thousand things it can't and we love that about that but let's get into some of the top things the biggest tip that i have taken and learned along the way unfortunately through trial and error low and slow is key we always start at medium low or low because it's always easy to bring the temperature up but these this is cold rolled steel once that thing is scalding hot it is really hard to get the temperature back down we burn some food. You make a lot of people unhappy. Usually it's me that's the most unhappy <laughs> when things don't Like go I didn't right. burn anything yeah, yesterday, I right? <laughs> but having said that, so low and slow is probably the biggest tip when you're griddle cooking. We've had people reach out and say, hey, this didn't quite work out. A lot of times my first question is, well, what temperature were you doing it at? People joke all the time that griddle cooking is a super active cook. You've heard us say that it's a super active cook. You're constantly moving, you're grooving. Um, you know, people don't have a time, time to enjoy a beverage while they're griddle cooking because the food's already done. Low and slow is actually one workaround. We have found we've been able to, to get most of our cooks done by keeping things low and slow. But let's talk about some of the things that yeah, we let's, love Yeah, let's with jump it. into it, man. So real quick, uh, one tip that I could say, get yourself a ton of these squirt bottles. We actually got this in a, an accessory kit that we'll talk about in just a little bit. These squeeze bottles are awesome. We put our, our different um, oils in them. I also have one for my mayonnaise, my mustard, my ketchup. These squirt bottles are so handy. Soy sauce. Soy sauce as well. Anytime you're griddle cooking, it's just so nice to have them accessible. Grab these. So nice. Griddle cooking 101. Get yourself a whole bunch of these. And by the way, when I first started getting my regular squirt bottles, this is water, by the way. Um, when I first purchased a six pack of these squirt bottles, I was able to find these at Sam's Club and got them, I think, for like three or four dollars mm -hmm. for six of them. Now they're darn near impossible to find. <laughs> if you find them, great. Uh, comment below where you're finding them. Uh, the squirt bottles are a huge thing to come by. You can't get enough squirt bottles. Now, one of the biggest questions that we get asked a lot is which oil is best and to be quite honest there isn't a best oil the first time I seasoned it I used canola oil and it, it worked out great since then I finally found some flaxseed oil I was so against flaxseed oil because uh, you know co common problems are it flakes well I found any oil 
flakes. We live in the south. It is super humid and hot here all the time. And I was wondering why my season kept coming up. And so I went to the Blackstone website and found out they did say if you live in a humid area, especially in the south, you're going to have to season more regularly. So I have found that I do season more on a regular basis. Flaxseed. Flaxseed oil. oil is actually helped with just seasoning. So I use flaxseed oil specifically like if I'm after a cook, if, the, if, the, if it's looking rough, just to kind of put a layer of that uh, before I call it a day. One of the first ever uploads we did concerning our Blackstone was when I unboxed this accessory kit, which came with two of these bottles, the two spatulas and the scraping tool. I will say, if you don't have yourself a good scraping tool, you've got to get yourself a good scraping tool. This not only do we use for kind, kind of scrape and clean up afterwards, this is such a valuable tool. We use this also for cutting meat, for chopping anytime. How much, how often, we use this in almost every cook. And, yeah, almost every single cook we use that and Adam gifted me these, this, same the kit, accent. when I got my Blackstone, I promise you, as soon as you pull these out of the box, you're gonna practice your teppanyaki. <laughs> it just happens, it happens. I love the way they're weighted. It feels They feel really good in the hand and they work really, really well. Yes, they do. I only have one bottle. Why, because Adam? The one, because another tip I wanna give you. Yep. Even though my 36 has the extra lip around on the outside, when you're cooking hot, especially when you're seasoning your griddle or if you're cleaning it after and so you're burning off some of the excess food and you've got it really high heat, uh, the bottles will melt if they're all the way butted up against the lip of that. And that's exactly what happened. Right in this region here. Yeah, the bottle melted. So keep them away from that. That does get really hot. That's a tip for you. In addition to the spatula family that Adam has here is what he calls Brutus. <laughs> I've called it Brutus, I've called it Hercules, Goliath, Goliath. Whatever I'm in the mood for, this thing is gargantuan. Now, this first came into play in the Smash Burger video. This was awesome in that. This also helped us with the pizza cook. I also use this spatula almost pancakes. Um, for pancakes, oh my goodness, yeah, for the pancakes. Because of the size, this is so awesome. And again, it's it's heavier, but it feels nice in the hand. I love having the bigger spatula. I get more questions about this than anything else. I did get this at Walmart. It retails at $15. I love it. I've tried to find it on Blackstone. I've tried to get links to it to Amazon. If I can get a link, I'll put it in. It hasn't been available on Amazon, but I love this extra large spatula from uh, Blackstone. I want to get you a good set of click one twos to click one twos. That's right, and you know you're getting a good set if you click, click, you do the click check and boy, <laughs> those are great. Just having a good set of tongs and I would say long tongs, especially when you're getting hot up in here with the bacon, it's good for, it's good for reaching away, which and is cleaning. really nice. And seasoning. Ooh, for seasoning, cleaning, because it holds the paper towels and things like that. So with the Smash Burgers, if you watched our Smash Burgers 2.0 Return of the Smash, you saw this guy. We've used this in a few of the videos. This is Blackstone's extra large press. I absolutely love this thing. It and is huge, it is heavy, it is cast iron. All right, next up we got this gem right here, which has definitely helped with some cooks. <laughs> This is, I did. Also protecting us from danger. Yes, this is, works as a shield and a weapon. Um, I have the small, just the circular dome, and uh, it's absolutely awesome. You can use it if you're doing like a bunch of smash burgers, you put them under there, squirt some water, it's gonna melt the cheese. Right. We used it for covering uh, biscuits, for our biscuits and gravy. We've done, um, well, just about anything. That, that thing is absolutely awesome, and it can act as an oven in a cooler, not as warm area on the Blackstone. The reason I went with the large one, you can actually just get a pan, put some magnets I've seen people do. I was in a position to get the large one, I did. Um, because it fits actually front to back all the way in the 36. It fits it very well. We have used this in many cooks for the biscuits and gravy. This covered the biscuits, like Brett said. The reason why I recommend having some type of dome is because when the griddle surface is hot, if you are making grilled cheese, if you're making burgers or anything, you need to melt that cheese. Leaving the burgers on a little bit longer might burn them. So having the dome over the top to create steam is the quickest way to get that melt. So good call, Brett. We love that thing. You need ya a plate with three gentlemen cooking on it. That's it. <laughs> that's what you need. See, that's because we are the three gentlemen. One, two, and you are the third. Uh, but ha just having a large plate in general, this is this was gifted to me by my father-in-law. Love him for it. I love this plate. The reason why is just having a large plate. Getting things in and out of the house, we can't tell you enough. 
Hungry Hussy, if you haven't checked out his channel, excellent channel. He actually went to a restaurant store and was able to get those large restaurant trays, which I've tried to find. Just having something large to move everything from inside the house to outside the house, all in one trip. There's nothing worse than being in the middle of a, of a cook and then you realize you left something in. So having a big tray, a big plate is really helpful. Yeah, and, and just to add on to that, like we said a lot of times with the griddle cooking, it is constant actively cooking. So if you realize you've forgotten something and you're like, um, I have to run in really quick and get that, hopefully not burn this or hopefully have someone that you can yell to in the house say, hey, bring me fill in the blank. So uh, just another idea, make sure that you have, you, you go over the recipes, make sure you have everything on the plate and bring them all in one in, in one trip, right? We did mention the biscuits and gravy. And I will tell you this cooling rack or warming rack has come in so handy. This one also, this is by Cuisinart. I do have the link to this down in the description. Uh, in case I didn't mention it, some of the affiliate links that we are putting, we do receive a small commission. I will tell you it is very small, but the reason we put them is because it comes at absolutely no cost to you. It doesn't cost you anything more. So check out the links and you don't just have to look at these products. You can actually use the link to look at many products that Amazon has. But the cooling rack I love, or the warming rack we've used from everything from our wings to the biscuits to, I've used these for hot dogs to mm -hmm. raise the heat because this one specifically it does adjust and it does actually stand I'll put this along the side of the griddle for our wings we did it we were able to put all the wings here pull them off the heat and that way they're not directly on the griddle because even if I have a half of the griddle off turned off the heat it still gets really hot so this is this raises it up it is actually you keep saying cooling rack excuse me warming rack it can also be a cooling rack if you've got it off to the side you got something that's too hot you move it off side like wings yeah you know we're moving the wings you know over they can start the cooling process right. so you can eat them faster they're so freaking good <laughs> they are so good next up never underestimate the power the of power a of a good knife this is one i actually found on amazon this is the farmerware edge keeper and this little red thing it's just kind of, it's, it's a sharpener. So as you bring your knife in and out, every time you sharpen it. I've had mine now for a few months and I feel like it hasn't lost any of its sharpness. Just enough can't be said about having a good knife. Now, a couple more things that we want to touch on and then we'll move on with life. Paper towels, yeah. Paper towels and rags. Rags for seasoning, rags for cleaning up. Paper towels just about for anything else. In fact, a lot of the times if I'm just putting a light layer of oil, I will use paper towels. People get frustrated with lint. I have found you start to figure out how to use a paper towel to a point that it's going to leave lint. If you have a lot of lint right off the back, maybe get a different brand of, of paper towels. The specific brand the specific brand we have right now is Bounty. We've used Viva that, that we really like. You hear a lot of times say, you do you. And this is, this is one of those. You're gonna find something that works for you. We're just hoping we're giving you some ideas to help better your griddling life. Absolutely. Attached to the underbelly of my 36 combo here is a magnetic uh, paper towel holder. Uh, as soon as I saw Hungry Hussy had one, I thought, oh my gosh, I gotta get one. Didn't think about how convenient that was because I do constantly need paper towels. I pull paper towels from inside and sometimes I forget them or I can't find them. Uh, we try to get another paper towel holder, but then it's taking up space. By using the magnetic paper towel holder, I'm able to just put it underneath the side table and I love that thing. It has been awesome. One thing that we've really gotten into and, and been considering more and more, first, if you've seen a lot of our cooks, we're used to backyard cooking for just our families. And with that, we weren't really too concerned about wearing gloves, mainly because, well, it was just us, it was just our families and it was just what we were used to. The more and more we got into it and realized, like, look, if we're gonna do bigger cooks, having gloves is, is a must. Having these food rated nitrile gloves are awesome. We love these. You'll see us wearing the orange ones in some of our cooks, some of the black ones. These have proven to be awesome. Amazing. And this Venom Steel, we've loved this brand. I like it because they're not incredibly expensive mm -hmm. and they are really durable and they work good. Now, I personally, I don't like when my hands get all greasy, all messy. This is another way to actually not only protect protect the food and not have your hands all over it, also is a great way to, well, just uh, to not make your hands messy. So we've loved having these gloves. One tip that is necessary for every single cook on your griddle, the wall twins. The wall twins. Bring us <laughs> along with twins. you. <laughs> Bring us along, we'll be there. We love to cook great. with you and for you. Right, I was actually gonna say, like the last tip I would say, get yourself a twin brother. Yeah. And that makes all the griddles a successful cook. That's it, that's all right. All the cooks are successful in the griddle. Yeah. Finally, the biggest tip that I can give you, it's nearly impossible to mess up your griddle. When we first got this Blackstone, I was so excited and we got into this and there's nothing more excited than finding a group of people that are like-minded. So. We joined a couple of Facebook groups. 
while it has been a blessing, it's also been a little bit of a curse because uh, there seem to be so many keyboard warriors who have the best advice, who their way is better than your way. And so a lot of people, us included, get really reluctant to just try things or put things out. Fortunately, YouTube has been an excellent source. Todd Tobin is spectacular. He's really put my mind at ease about so many of the things I do when yes. it comes to seasoning, when it comes to specific cooks. Uh, Hungry Hussy has been outstanding. There are so many good YouTubers out there. It's just an excellent community, and hopefully we bring you the same comfort in knowing that it's really hard to mess this thing up. Whether you didn't season it at all or correctly the first time, that's okay. Just start again, it's okay. Yep. Without having to rip the whole thing off, it's okay, you can do it. Cooking wise, you might burn some food, that's how you're gonna find what works and what doesn't, but ultimately you find. Do what works for you, everything else is just noise. People yep. have come in and explained how I clean my griddle wrong, how I season my griddle wrong. Well, I'll tell you, We've got it looking spectacular. The food comes off tasting outstanding. We were together for the 4th of July. The Wall Twins actually did the whole cook. Oh, and it was Tons amazing. of compliments because yep. we just did things the way that we like to do them. Do the things the way that you want to yes. cook and you will love this and you will have no regrets. That's we, my biggest tip. Just enjoy the process. We have had so, we've had a lot of people to basically straight up tell us we're doing it wrong. They're not here tasting the food. Yeah. The end result, as we say, it can look amazing, it can smell amazing, but if it doesn't taste amazing, it was all for naught. You know, whether we're cooking things too slow, cooking things too hot, it's the end result. If you're cooking for your family, if you're cooking for your friend, and you're, they're seeing you praise, you did it right. Yeah. You did it absolutely right. So right. don't let others down you. If you need anyone to have your back, reach out to us, we're here. And in case you're wondering whether or not that's true, go check out our very first Smashburger video. <gasps> See how, see how many dislikes that has. I have been slammed for that because it just didn't cook fast enough. People are right, it didn't cook fast enough. People felt like I did that one wrong. Here's the deal, it cooked slower than expected. I had just finished seasoning earlier the day. Uh, that was the very first cook on the griddle. My family was so excited for these burgers. I cranked the heat up and no matter what I did, I couldn't get those burgers to cook quickly. Here's the deal. At the end of the day, to that point, they had still been the best burgers I ever cooked. So you'll find people are going to tell you all the things you're doing wrong. Just do what works for you and it will always work out, I promise you. Hate is gone, hate. Haters gonna hate and you know what, just keep it positive. Love this, enjoy it, and enjoy the frustration that it's not always gonna work out, but ultimately just enjoy the cook. And feel free to share your journey with us. Right, but Brett, I am getting hungry. Let's go ahead and let's, yeah. let's go ahead and get a cook on so we can feed the masses. Again, any tips or tricks that you have, put those in the comments below. We'd love to hear any extra tips because we love to learn and then we love to share what we learn. But Brett, aside from coming and just sharing our love for griddle cooking, for the Griddle Nation, why else are we doing this? Because all we do is twin, no, no matter what. what. And with that, we bid you adieu. And adieu. Forget, Forget to like and subscribe. And griddle, griddle on. on.